The story begins in a shed, or perhaps an abandoned factory. On the roof, there is a man tied up by a rope that is about to snap, almost falling into a cage full of zombies. Hello, some people laugh at his situation, saying, Jiang Xiaoyong, all your friends are dead. Life no longer has any meaning for you, or does it? Jiang Xiaoyong thinks, damn, it's my fault. I caused this to you. Ah, you bastard. You deserve a miserable death. A voice stands out among the laughter. Look at him, he's angry with me again. We'll torture him slowly to satiate his anger, but we have to be grateful for the supplies. We can live comfortably for a few more months now. Just then, one of the captors lets go of the rope and Jiang Xiaoyong falls into the cage. Without hesitation, the zombies began to devour him. Damn Chui Jing, damn Li Xuxiong. If I had another chance to live, I'd make you both pay for what you've done. Suddenly, Jiang Xiaoyong woke up in a familiar but different place. What? What's happening? Have I been reborn? Have I come back? What happened? He remembers his past life. Damn it, in my past life I was cheated by Chui Jing. Not only did she steal the inheritance my parents left me, but she also made me homeless. And then the global catastrophe happened, turning most humans into zombies and plunging the world into chaos. With the help of my friends, we managed to build a safe zone and survive the apocalypse. But who would have thought that lying Chui Jing would pretend to be a desperate person seeking refuge, when in fact she was sent by the enemy to destroy us? Suddenly, he was interrupted by a voice, and the price will be 400,000 yuan, not a penny less. Do you hear me? Hey, are you paying attention to what I'm saying? You bastard. Zhang Xiaoyong thinks, calm down, I can't be impulsive now. He replies, I'll give you a week. If nothing's right, okay, okay, I get it, go away. Chui Jing thinks, what's going on? When did Jiang Xiaoyong become so assertive? Wasn't he my lackey? He simply closes the door in her face and looks at his watch. Less than a month to go. I need to start preparing for the apocalypse immediately. Suddenly, something catches his eye. A screen appears, indicating a task system. Apocalyptic task system is now active. System mission, Liber complete as quickly as possible. Mission name, Apocalypse Preparation. Requirements. Own a piece of land and prepare provisions for a year. Mission reward. 10 system points. Jiang Xiaoyong realizes that the points can be exchanged for rewards in the system store. When he opens the store, he sees three items. A physical enhancement potion, plus one, for two points. A level one apocalypse farmer's supply box for two points. And a level one protagonist's supply box for ten points. He is impressed by the options. I'd almost forgotten about it in my previous life. I was saving up for the wedding to Chui Jing, which left me with nothing but dust. But now, in a month, zombies will be everywhere. I need to have good food so I can live well. Later that day, Jiang Xiaoyong throws himself a banquet. So this is the legendary and expensive three-star Michelin travel restaurant? Well, I'll taste the price of that expensive meat here. He starts to devour all the food he's bought, until suddenly someone calls him. Chui Jing's friend appears on his cell phone. That manipulative woman must have cried to her little friend, and now the woman starts shouting into the phone, telling him how he can treat his fiancé like this, that he has to give her priority and buy an even more expensive house. Get out, woman, he thinks, and simply hangs up on her. After relaxing a little on the sofa, Jiang Xiaoyong reflected, I need a piece of land, don't I? I'm going to build the most powerful fortress on this land. Not just defensible, but close to a water source and a forest. The next day, he goes to a fancy shopping center. Hello, sir. Are you here to rent or buy a house? He replies, neither. I'm here to, but he's interrupted by a manager. I've already told you to go and tidy up the bins at the back. We received toilet paper today. This is the young sales manager, Zhu. Ah, manager Zhu, I'm serving a customer. Have you forgotten everything I taught you? For God's sake, there's no point in that. Go work in the back. A broke loser in cheap clothes probably can't even afford a toilet, Zhu says. Jiang Xiaoyong, calm, replies, I'm a person who turns my nose up at dogs like you. If I manage to buy the toilet, I'll do a live broadcast of me eating poop. With a firm look on his face, he says, if that's what you say, I'll definitely find something fresh for you to eat later, miss. I'm not here to rent or sell today. I'm here to buy land. Everyone is amazed. My God, he's a real tycoon. I've never seen anyone buy land like that. Oh my God, nowadays that's very common, isn't it? Buying land is crazy. It's so expensive. Ah, of course, sir, come this way. I'll give you a detailed introduction. 
Anyone can say that, but I want to see when it's time to pay. I doubt he has any money. These are the plots of land that our company currently owns, sir. You can take a look while I present them to you. No, I don't want to see a list. I'll tell you my requirements, and you tell me if you have a plot of land like this. Is that all right? Oh, yes, of course. Go on. I want a plot of land near the mountains with water, preferably with a source of running water. Transportation must be convenient. If there's a big house or factory on the site, even better. Let me think. There's one in the Eastern District that meets his requirements. East District? Are you talking about that place that only has unfinished factories? Hasn't that been sorted out yet? We can't sell that. Sell what? This guy is listing bizarre demands. It's not like he's buying land. He's just here to cause trouble. Does this lot in the Eastern District really meet the requirements? Oh yes, but the factories are unfinished and the project leader ran away. Jiang Xiaoyong begins to analyze the papers. The location is not bad and meets the requirements. I just need to surround it with barbed wire and it will be easy to defend and difficult to attack. These unfinished factories can save me time and costs. I'll take that land. I can sign the contract now. Yes, of course, sir. Calm down, let me get this straight. You're really going to buy the land with the unfinished factories. Yes, you can draw up the contract and I'll make the payment. Someone's really looking forward to eating something fresh. Huh? No, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. 30,000 is the deposit. Is anyone really willing to spend that kind of money on a piece of land with unfinished factories? I don't believe it. Yeah, I made the payment. Now it's your turn. If you eat with gusto, I can send you something nice afterwards. Ah, fatty. I've already started the live here, but my stomach isn't very good today. But I promise it's fresh. The system appears again. Task name, disaster preparedness. Task requirement, own a piece of land, zero out of one completed. Now we just need to cover a whole year. I spent all my wedding money buying this land. Now I need to figure out how to get more money and stock up on supplies. This isn't Xia. What's he doing here? And when the person looks ahead, they shout, help, help me. I don't want to eat shit. I don't want to eat shit. In the next scene, the story changes to Chui Jing. She answers the phone. Li Xuxiong, you asshole, you still remember me, don't you? Did you know that Xiaoyong just left the real estate agency after buying land today? What? Did he buy land? Where did he get the money from? 30,000 deposit. I think it's the wedding money he saved. What? You bastard. That bastard used my money. Don't be angry. Go and find Jiang Xiaoyong and ask him what's going on. Ask what? That bastard is cheating me. How dare he use my money? I'm going to expose him online today. Meanwhile, Jiang Xiaoyong is quietly at home, thinking, buying supplies and building a base will take a lot of money. Where am I going to get it? Until the door of his house begins to be battered down. What are you two doing here, eh? Jiang Xiaoyong, what have you got on your mind? How dare you spend my money? What are you talking about, you crazy woman? Don't think I don't know that you used the wedding money to buy a piece of land. I'm warning you, the wedding money is mine. Since you bought a plot of land, it's mine. You must be going mad for good, aren't you? Look here, I've got money, but I won't let you keep a single penny of it. Don't think I don't know about you and that old Li Xuxiong. How does he know about Li Xuxiong? Hey you two, calm down. It's probably just a misunderstanding between couples. Misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding. Besides, she and I aren't a couple. It's her and that old man. And get out of here, just looking at your face makes me angry. Chui Jing thinks, impossible, how could he know? We've been so discreet. Tao, this is such a big deal. How come you didn't warn me before? Did you really get involved with that middle-aged man Li Xuxiong? We went to a motel about three times. Ah, this has become a big problem, a hopeless situation. Let's come up with a plan. Yeah, I think that's all we can do at the moment. Just as the elevator opens, Chui Jing is heading for it. Her friend thinks, Chui Jing screwed up with Jiang Xiaoyong so I'll take over. After all, we're good sisters and sisters share, right? The next day, Jiang Xiaoyong is on his newly acquired plot of land. He points to the unfinished factory and says to the contractor, this is the factory I want to renovate. How long will it take to reinforce the walls, build guard towers, install barbed wire, raise the blast-proof steel gates and reinforce the bulletproof glass? The contractor, surprised by the demands, asks, Can I ask you what kind of gang you're involved with? Jiang Xiaoyong replied firmly, Don't ask too many questions. Knowing too much won't do you any good. Now, just tell me if you can finish it here in less than a month and how much it will cost. The contractor hesitates, but says, We can't finish this in a month. Jiang Xiaoyong, 
impatient, retorts, bullshit, if you don't do it, I'll hire someone else. Bricklayers have a life, sir. Noticing Jiang Xiaoyong's seriousness, the contractor eventually gave in. Ah, so you're aware of that, I mean, it's gonna cost more, obviously. Name your price. If we want to finish in a month, I'll make the bricklayers work very hard. At least 20 million. 20 million, that's fine. You must give us an advance deposit of 5 million to start working. I'll transfer the money in a week. Start working now. Don't worry, I won't run away without paying. It's my land, isn't it? Ah, yes, of course. All right then, brother. Bye. As the contractor prepares to leave, he sees someone approaching and asks, What are you doing here? Jiang Xiaoyong looks at the figure and says, I wonder what you're doing here. The person replies with a smile, Um, in my past life, you persuaded Chui Jing to make that plan. So you managed to take my family's property. This time, I'm gonna make you pay double. And what are you doing here on my land? Ah, so this is the land you bought. The view is so beautiful. Do you want to build a condominium here? What I build or fail to build is none of your business. How strange. What's going on with that loser? He's acting so differently today. I threw myself at him and nothing happened. Today, I deliberately showed off a bit more, and he had no reaction. Something's not right. Jiang Xiaoyong continues. The gate must be expanded. There's no way they've forgotten. I can't miss this golden opportunity. Since Chui Jing has fallen out with him, I'll be able to push her out of the game, and this land will be mine. Later, at home, Jiang Xiaoyong analyzes his situation. Pledging this house at the bank will only get me 3 million yuan. That's not enough to complete the first phase. I need a lot more money for the construction. Calm down. Wait, the apocalypse is going to come anyway. That means that even if I sell the house to several people, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it. He decides to sell the same house to several people and take everyone's money. The guy's a genius, he thinks. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. Hey, open the door. Open the door. Jiang Xiaoyong recognized the voice. Oh, it's that old man again, my downstairs neighbor. Mr. Li, do you have any money? He bought the first and second floors and wants to buy my third floor too. Originally, I intended to use this house as my own after I got married, so I refused to sell. Since then, he's been causing trouble, painting my door, littering. Did you go to the club again last night? That's enough, you dirty old man. I went to bed before 10, I didn't go clubbing, but I heard it clearly. Stop this shit, you just want to buy my house, don't you? That's enough, I'll sell it to you. Are you serious? Are you going to sell? But I have one condition. What condition is that? I'm handing over the house in 6 months, because I'm going to live here until my other house is ready, and you need to transfer me 5 million before the sale. The old man thinks for a moment and agrees. Alright, if you don't want to, then forget it. Okay, good. But we need a contract. Sure, old man. A contract won't be a problem. Jiang Xiaoyong smiles inside. Old bastard, you can die in your house waiting. When Mr. Li's 5 million comes down, plus the 3 million from the loan, I'll have 8 million yuan. But his priority is to complete the mission in order to collect his reward. Meanwhile, on the streets, he's trying to complete a mission to collect supplies for an entire year. 359 days out of 365 have passed, and the people in the market are looking at him strangely. Why do you think he's buying so many things? He must be another sucker believing in that doomsday thing. Until the system pops up, disaster prepared mission completed. He earns 10 points from the system. Improving my attributes is important, but this box of supplies here costs exactly 10 points, so I'm not going to hesitate. I'll seize the first opportunity. I'm going all out. Jiang Xiaoyong spends the 10 points in the system and takes the box of supplies from the protagonist. Jiang Xiaoyong received a special level 1 ring when he opened the protagonist's supply box. The ring's characteristics were impressive. It contained 500 cubic meters of space, and inside the that space, time didn't pass. I knew it. The first item that comes in these boxes is always legendary. Time stands still in space. So does that mean that if I put food in there, it won't spoil? That's great. While Jiang Xiaoyong was pondering the possibilities of the ring, he was interrupted by a familiar voice. Who's causing trouble around here, huh? He turns around and sees Yong Tao, an old high school classmate who used to be a lackey of Zhang Shangzi, the school bully. Ah, it's you, Yong Tao. Are you still around? Yong Tao was known for always siding with the weak and fearing the strong. 
Jiang Xiaoyong and he had had many conflicts at school, and he hadn't expected to meet him again. What are you doing? Put your things back where they belong, or you'll regret it. Jiang Xiaoyong replies calmly, You've always been rude to the weak, haven't you, Yong Tao? Keep defending the bullies. I'm here to buy. Is that how you treat your customers? To buy? Then pay for these items now. After an hour of going through the checkout, Yong Tao asks, How much did you get in total? The total was 56,800 yuan. Jiang Xiaoyong, without hesitation, swiped the card. Transaction successful. Okay, let's go. Wait a minute. What do you want now? Kid, you were so rude to me when I really just wanted to buy something. If you don't come and apologize, I'll return everything and give you a refund. You're going too far. You're looking for a lot of trouble, huh? But the people who were in the market watching everything began to defend Jiang Xiaoyong. Apologize sincerely, and I'll buy ten times as much in this little market of yours. It's true. Bring the machine and I'll show you my balance. 700,000 yuan. Apologize and I'll keep buying. Yong Tao reluctantly bowed and apologized. Right, right, I apologize. Just remember not to be reckless like that again. Okay? Yes, we will. If it's something important you need, we won't have it all in the market warehouse. You need a wholesaler. You work in the market, right? You must know a wholesaler. Ah, yes, of course. Do you remember Zhang Shangza? He has a wholesale business now. Brother Shangza, I found a great client for you. Jiang Xiaoyong thinks, so Yong Tao is still working for Zhang Shangza. I wonder how much legal income he's making from this supermarket here. They arrive at the place that was supposed to be attacked until a car arrives at high speed, being driven arrogantly, as if the driver owned the world. A man gets out of the car wearing an overcoat and smoking a cigarette. Oh, is that the big client you mentioned? Ah yes, brother Shangza, that's him. Do you remember Xiao Yong? Xiao Yong? Ah, uh, the Xiao from our high school. Now I remember. Zhang Shangzi blows cigarette smoke in Zhang Xiaoyong's face, who is not happy about it. You're brave, aren't you? Wearing fake clothes, I despise people who pretend to be rich. Zhang Xiaoyong, remaining calm, replied, What do you mean counterfeit, buddy? I bought them in every store I saw. Is that the big client you were talking about? What a waste of time. Sir, he really is a big client. My ass is a great customer. I've been in this business for so many years. I know who's rich and who's poor. It seems that my aura of wealth really isn't working, is it? I can't even impress an illiterate. What did you just say, kid? I just said that you're making fun of people for nothing. How dare you call me illiterate? So it's okay to say you're a bully, right? Yong Tao tries to defuse the situation. Brother Shangza, don't keep teasing Xiao Yong. He really doesn't like it when people talk about him like that. You're only making things worse. Zhang Shengzi, irritated, threatened, big customer. If you don't accept a truckload of goods, you won't even leave here alive. Zhang Xiaoyong, holding Zhang Shengzi firmly by the collar, speaks confidently. If you stop grabbing me by the collar and look at my bank account, you'll see 1 million yuan right away. Zhang Shengzi, surprised, asked, are you serious? Of course, no kidding. Why else would I be here? This is the warehouse. I'm buying 5 million in goods. Quick, load the truck, and I'll give you the remaining 4 million when the goods are ready. Zhang Shengzi, intrigued, asked, but what kind of merchandise do you want? I want rice, salt, snacks, drinks, anything edible or drinkable. I want everything. Okay, follow me. As they head to the warehouse, Zhang Shengzi thinks to himself, I can't believe my luck. I've just picked up a batch of almost expired food and this asshole is here to take it all. Inside the warehouse, Zhang Shengzi continues, If you take this whole lot here, I'll give you a 10% discount on the original wholesale price. What do you think? Zhang Xiaoyong looks at the goods and comments, It depends on the quality. After checking, he says, Except for the outer layer, everything here is almost expired. You're quite clever, aren't you? Zhang Shengzi, Zhang Shengzi, a little disconcerted, thinks, I didn't expect this guy to understand the business. Zhang Xiaoyong continues, but if you give me a 50% discount, I'll take all the almost expired goods. Zhang Shangzi, curious, asks, You're using your money to buy quality merchandise. What about those almost expired ones here? Do you have other plans? Zhang Xiaoyong replies, Exactly. With a 50% discount, I'll take all the goods that are almost due, but payment will be made in a month's time. Is that all right? But what if they expire before payment? Will you still pay me? Don't worry, I'll mortgage my house for you. Zhang Shangzi, intrigued, asks, 
You know they're almost expired and you still want to buy them? What can you tell me? Why are you doing this? Jiang Xiaoyong replied confidently. It's not because it's almost expired that it's not food. It'll be worth a fortune in a few days' time. What do you mean? Jiang Xiaoyong cuts off the conversation. Stop talking about the future and asking questions. Just deliver the goods and I'll send you the address later. Is that all right? Just then, Jiang Xiaoyong's phone rings and he sees that someone is calling to ask about the sale of his house. He says to Zhang Shangzi, I have something to do. Take care of the food for me. Eh. Meanwhile, Zhang Shangzi is thinking, did I underestimate this guy? His family is ordinary, so how come he's so well off? In the next scene, Zhang Xiaoyong is negotiating the sale of his house with another buyer. Here's a deposit of 400,000 yuan, and I can accept your condition that I vacate the house in three months. I'll sign the contract now. Zhang Xiaoyong, watching the buyer, thought, this gentleman hasn't even inspected the house properly and is already anxious to pay and sign the contract. Why is he so desperate? Curious, he asks, Sir, why are you in such a hurry? The man replies sincerely, To be honest, my granddaughter has to change schools and we urgently need a house to live in. I've been looking around the area and only your house is for sale. Please don't give up on this opportunity. Jiang Xiaoyong, sensing the urgency, commented, You're being very honest by revealing everything at once. Aren't you afraid I'll raise the price? The man, distressed, replied, Please don't give up on this sale. I really need this house. Jiang Xiaoyong, showing understanding, says, Don't worry, I was just making an assumption. I'm not giving up. After they both sign the contract, the man thanks him, That's great, sir. I'm sorry to bother you. I won't bother you anymore. Jiang Xiaoyong, reflecting, thought, Kind and honest like that? He and his granddaughter won't survive the apocalypse one bit. Before the man leaves, Jiang Xiaoyong asks, Sir, can you give me the address of where you're living now? In the next scene, Zhang Xiaoyong returns to the land he bought and checks on the progress of the construction. Mr. Zhang, about the second part of the payment, I'll transfer it to you soon. How's the construction going? The builder replies, around 70 to 80 percent complete. Look at the walls and doors, absolutely secure and reliable. What about the warehouse? The warehouse is an unfinished factory building, but it's already clean and ready for use. That's very good. Mr. Zhang, you can bring the products. In the next scene, a group of workers start loading and organizing the goods on the shelves. There are a lot of boxes and shelves, and Jiang Xiaoyong supervises every detail, giving instructions on where each thing should be. In the end, late at night, the employees leave the factory, leaving all the products safely stored. The system appears for Jiang Xiaoyong, indicating that the 10 years of supplies mission has been completed, and he has earned 20 system points. Look, there's a new box available. There's now the physical enhancement potion box which costs 20 points, the apocalypse farmer supply box for 2 points, and the awakening skill supply box for 10 points. Jiang Xiaoyong smiles, thinking, I'm very lucky to gain skills before the apocalypse begins. Jiang Xiaoyong decided to spend 10 points to obtain the awakening skill supply box, leaving him with 10 points left over. On opening the box, he obtained the Mind's Eye skill, the characteristic of which is to detect whether another person has hostility towards him or not. Detecting hostility, that's one of the most useful skills at the start of the apocalypse, he thought. The system appeared again with a new task, armed to the teeth. Task requirement, arm yourself. Reward, 10 points plus a random reward. Excited, Jiang Xiaoyong said, that's exactly what I was thinking. That night, he went to the city's black market. Passing through a noisy crowd, he heard a familiar voice selling a fake jade bracelet for 2,000 yuan. It's obviously a fake. Sell it to me for 300 and you'll still make a profit. Are you gonna sell it or not? If it won't sell, I'll leave. Okay, okay, fine. Just don't go shouting around. I'll sell it to you. Jiang Xiaoyong observed, Li Chong, buying a fake jade bracelet on the black market? And Chui Jing fell for that sucker's scam. As he walked through the market, something caught his eye. Blades, swords, and melee weapons. Looks like I've finally found what I've been looking for. He bent down close to the salesman and asked, Boss, do you have anything stronger than this? The salesman, without much patience, threw a whetstone on the floor. That's a sharpener. If you want something strong, buy it and sharpen it yourself. Jiang Xiaoyong replied seriously, it's not strong enough. I need something stronger. The salesman, suspicious, asked, what do you mean? Are you here to cause trouble? Suddenly, 
the seller's cell phone vibrated with a notification. He had received 200,000 yuan. Zhang Xiaoyong showed the QR code he had used to make the payment and said, I was serious. The salesman, surprised, told his assistant to keep an eye on the stall and asked Zhang Xiaoyong to follow him to a more secluded spot. In a secluded spot, the vendor began to explain, Here, boss, we have enough homemade guns to kill a chicken or two for 2,000 yuan. The ammunition is very cheap, gunpowder and steel bullets. How's that? No, it's not good enough. The salesman looked around and pointed to a replica revolver. This revolver performs almost as well as a normal gun. It costs 50,000 yuan and the 9mm ammunition costs 5,000 yuan each. How's that? That's acceptable, but I paid you 200,000 yuan in advance. Selling just that isn't very suitable, is it? Oh, that's right. The advance payment is only 10% of a larger order. I want to pay 2 million in weapons. The salesman was intrigued and asked, Just out of curiosity, sir, what do you do for a living? And why did you come to me with such a large order? Zhang Xiaoyong replied dismissively, Normally, I don't take care of such trivial matters. My subordinates do, but there have been some changes recently. You know how it is. The salesman, sensing the seriousness, locked the door, looked out of the window to make sure no one was around, and whispered in Zhang Xiaoyong's ear, You found the right person. Write a list and I'll give you the address. Go there at midnight the day after tomorrow to complete the transaction. Bring cash. From that moment on, the salesman treated Zhang Xiaoyong with extreme deference. Meanwhile, Zhang Xiaoyong came across another familiar face on the black market. Look, if it isn't Yong Tao, finding you here, no wonder you've been spending so much lately. Looks like your family has some heirs, huh? Zhang Xiaoyong thought, time to test my new mind's eye skill. He saw that, above the head of the salesman he had just made the transaction with, there was a happy face, indicating that he was not hostile. However, when he looked at Yong Tao, he realized that the indicator showed hostility. As expected, this skill is very useful, concluded Zhang Xiaoyong. Lying on the bed, Zhang Xiaoyong began to tease Yong Tao. I want to make easy money, so you bought this for Chui Jing to sleep with her? These fake secondhand things. Imagine if she knew. Yong Tao is furious and shouts, What are you talking about, kid? Zhang Xiaoyong notices that the little emoji above Yong Tao's head, which indicates hostility, turns even redder. The salesman, sensing the tension, asks, Ah, sir, do you know this guy? No, more like an enemy. Understanding, the salesman promptly replies, Understood, boss. I'll teach him a lesson. But don't kill him, okay? I have other plans for him. The salesman then gathers a gang to beat up Yong Tao. Desperate, Yong Tao tries to argue. What are you doing? I have no problem with you. Let's talk, let's talk. But the vendor mercilessly begins his assault. In the next scene, Yong Tao is thrown out of the market with footprints all over his clothes and face. Furious, he thinks, Xiaoyong, you bastard, just wait for me. Two days later, at Zhang Xiaoyong's fortified base, he receives the shipment of weapons. The system appears and informs him that the armed to the teeth mission has been completed, and he has earned another 10 system points, making a total of 20. Now, my boys, I'm armed to the teeth, says Zhang Xiaoyong enthusiastically. He also receives a random reward, a plus two physical enhancement potion, which is twice as effective as the one in the store. Without much ceremony, he injects the potion. Immediately, he feels intense pain followed by a surge of adrenaline. The average physical strength of a grown man is 5. Adding two more, that's a 40% increase in power. With his strength renewed, Zhang Xiaoyong opens the system again and buys another physical enhancement potion. Let's maximize this advantage now, he thinks. After injecting the second potion, his physical strength rose to 8, an increase of 60% compared to an ordinary person. I need to test this somewhere. Perfect. He picks up a piece of metal rebar left over from the construction and kicks it so hard that it bends and crashes into the wall, cracking it. With my current strength even unarmed, no one can play with me. I'm not afraid of early stage zombies anymore, reflects Zhang Xiaoyong. He decides to store all the weapons inside the space ring, making sure everything is safe. The day after tomorrow is the first day of the apocalypse. Is there anything else I need to do? Then he remembers the honest old man who tried to buy his house. Zhang Xiaoyong feels a pang of conscience. Even after experiencing so much betrayal in the apocalypse, it's hard to completely ignore the plight of others, isn't it? I'm going to send some essential supplies to the apocalypse. He'll survive if I do. Consider it retribution for financing my plan. Zhang Xiaoyong drives up to a humble little house with his car. I had to use the GPS, otherwise I wouldn't have found this place. 
He comments as he climbs the stairs. It looks like this old man really isn't well off, renting such a cheap apartment. Before knocking on the door, Jiang Xiaoyong takes all the supplies out of the ring, filling the corridor with several boxes. He knocks on the door and waits. I'm coming, I'm coming. Just a moment, says the old man from inside the house. When the door opens, the old man, surprised, asks, Sir, what's all this? Jiang Xiaoyong replied, I'll explain later. For now, help me carry the things inside and don't let any neighbors see. The old man, amazed at Jiang Xiaoyong's strength, commented, You're young and have good stamina. Moving so much at once, you didn't even get out of breath. Is the room okay? Is the door sturdy enough? Zhang Xiaoyong replied seriously, Sir, what I'm going to say now, you'd better listen carefully. These supplies must be used wisely. They should last at least half a year. From tomorrow, this world. Suddenly, Zhang Xiaoyong sees something that startles him. A portrait of the old man with his granddaughter. He recognizes the girl's face immediately. Sir, is your granddaughter called Meng Shan Shan? Oh yes, actually. How do you know? I didn't mention her name. Where is your granddaughter now? She's studying in our hometown. As soon as the transfer is complete, we'll bring her here. The paperwork is almost done. Jiang Xiaoyong is seized by a flashback to his past life, where he remembers talking to Shan Shan in the middle of the apocalypse. She had confessed to causing trouble for her grandfather, who ended up dying trying to save her. Reflecting on this, Jiang Xiaoyong thinks, I remember that in the past life, Shan Shan said that her grandfather risked his life to rescue her from school. And although he managed to save her, he died. Your regret, in this life, I'll make it up to you. With determination, he says to the old man, Sir, you can't move anymore. Jiang Xiaoyong, realizing the complicated situation, said to the old man, What else? You're giving up on selling the house. Let me finish talking. From tomorrow, this world will become a human purgatory. It doesn't matter about my house or your granddaughter's school anymore. Now follow me. We're going to Shan Shan's school to pick her up now. The old man, confused, replied, What are you saying? I can't understand. This is madness. Jiang Xiaoyong thinks, that old man is going to be hard to convince. He tries to explain, you know what famine is, don't you? The situation that many countries face. Oh yes, of course, like miserable, terrible people in an age of famine. I can imagine it's very bad indeed. Suddenly, Jiang Xiaoyong uses the spatial ring to suck up all the items in the old man's house. Where are my things? What kind of magic is that? Jiang Xiaoyong replies seriously, I have superpowers and can predict the future. I want you and Shan Shan to live. From now on, do whatever I tell you. Where is Shan Shan's school? In the next scene, the two of them are in the car. The old man is nervous and scared, but Jiang Xiaoyong is determined. As the sun sets, they quickly arrive at the school. Do you know where her dormitory is? Oh yes, I know, I know. Meanwhile, Shan Shan is outside the dormitory, facing problems with some girls who are bothering her. One girl slaps her in the face and says, Damn you! I just don't understand what Zhang Sheng sees so beautiful about you. Shan Shan tries to defend herself. I told you, I didn't want to get involved with him. It's all one-sided. I don't like him. Another girl kicks Shan Shan, saying, Are you making excuses? What do you mean? Are you saying that my Shang is throwing himself at you? Just then, Zhang Xiaoyong and Shan Shan's grandfather arrive. The old man shouts, Hey, what are you doing to my granddaughter? One of the girls replies with contempt, Look, isn't that your useless grandfather? Shan Shan, surprised, asks, Grandpa, what are you doing here? The old man, furious, shouts, Let Shan Shan go! But some armed bullies who are protecting the girls approach. Get out, old man! The old man, undaunted, takes matters into his own hands. You bastard! You have no right to treat my granddaughter like that! One of the guys, armed with a baseball bat, tries to hit the old man, but Jiang Xiaoyong intervenes, holding the bat in the air. So young and already learning to be a shit, the bullies, surprised, begin to wonder where this guy has come from and what he's getting himself into. Jiang Xiaoyong, without wasting any time, throws the bully with a powerful kick, causing him to fall to the ground, bruised. The other bullies, impressed by Jiang Xiaoyong's strength, decide to attack him together. One of them tries to hit Jiang Xiaoyong on the head with his club, but he dodges easily and thinks, After improving my physical skills, even my reflexes are faster. He grabs the attacker's collar and throws him to the ground like a sack of potatoes, causing him to pass out. Another bully, armed with a penknife, tries to attack Jiang Xiaoyong, but he deflects the blow with his hand and delivers a powerful kick to the attacker's leg, causing him to hit his head and pass out too. With the two bullies on the ground, the girls are terrified. One of them, desperate, asks, 
What are you going to do to us now? Jiang Xiaoyong approaches and slaps her across the face, leaving her shocked and unresponsive. He then pulls another girl's hair and puts a knife to her neck. The other girls were even more frightened, thinking that he was going to do something terrible. But Jiang Xiaoyong only cuts the girl's hair. She desperately starts crying about her hair, which is apparently more important to her than the threat of being cut. Jiang Xiaoyong says coolly, Long hair will get in your way. In a few days, you'll understand. Short hair can save your life. He then turns to Shan Shan and says, Shan Shan, we're leaving. Shan Shan, still frightened, asks, leaving? Where to? In the next scene, they are already in the car, speeding off. Shan Shan, confused, asks, what do you mean I'm not going to school anymore? Grandpa tries to explain, there's going to be a big famine soon, and what's the point of going to school? We have to survive. Shan Shan, incredulous, replies, great hunger? What do you mean, Grandpa? I told you that kind of thing is a scam. They start arguing, with Shan Shan claiming that her grandfather always falls for scams, while he insists that this time it's true. Jiang Xiaoyong, listening to the argument, thinks, Shan Shan, in this life, I'll make sure you stay safe. He then intervenes, Shan Shan, your grandfather really wasn't fooled this time. I was the one who showed him about the famine. Shan Shan, still confused, asks, And who are you, by any chance? My name is Jiang Xiaoyong. You can call me Xiao from now on. Ah, okay, brother Xiao, and thank you for saving me earlier. Jiang Xiaoyong replied, Don't worry about such things. Those people will probably die in a few days. Shan Shan, startled, asks, What do you mean? Are you really going to be hungry? Jiang Xiaoyong explains, No, actually, hunger was just a metaphor for your grandfather to understand. I know it's hard to believe, but soon you'll see that this world will change drastically. It won't just be a famine. It will be an apocalypse. Shan Shan is completely startled. Apocalypse. Jiang Xiaoyong reflects for a moment, trying to remember the events of his past life. Yeah, I think that's the date. He checks his phone. If the short videos and news stories start to emerge, you should be able to see some signs. Shan Shan picks up her cell phone to check the latest news. She finds a video of a person who looked sick, full of rage, biting other people. As she continues to watch, other news stories appear, talking about a mist with a strange smell, a virus, and even an infected dog spreading a zombie virus. Several people are being infected by this virus. Jiang Xiaoyong comments, As expected, the signs of the apocalypse have already begun to appear. Shan Shan, still incredulous, asks, So there really is going to be an apocalypse? Jiang Xiaoyong explains, Tomorrow is the first day of the apocalypse. A toxic mist will cover several provinces. This unknown toxic mist will affect living creatures, and gradually, a significant part of the people will turn into zombies. And the other part, well, it will be food for the zombies. When they die in this way, they become one of them too. As a young person, you must know what a zombie is, right? Startled, Shan Shan replies, Yes, I know, but it's still unbelievable. Jiang Xiaoyong continues, By tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, or next week. When all this really happens, you won't find it so unbelievable. Suddenly, Jiang Xiaoyong realizes something. Damn, traffic jam. And, of course, even the emergency lane is blocked. Shan Shan is desperate. If we get stuck in traffic, we won't be able to outrun the zombies. Jiang Xiaoyong reassures her. It's not that urgent. It's still a few days before the zombies completely lose control. But if there is a small outbreak, suddenly, a car tries to cut in line across the emergency lane, rocking Jiang Xiaoyong's car. What the fuck? This guy's just cutting in? I won't let it go. Jiang Xiaoyong makes a move to block the other car and hits it slightly. But the other driver insists, trying to force his way past. Annoyed, Jiang Xiaoyong says, Damn, he's not giving up. The driver of the other car starts swearing at Jiang Xiaoyong, and the old man suggests, Never mind, he looks rich. But Jiang Xiaoyong, determined, replied, Don't worry, if he wants to pick a fight, I don't mind sending him to hell sooner. After a few hours of traffic jams, they finally get going. But Shan Shan warns them, That guy is insisting. He's at it again, trying to cut us off. This time, Jiang Xiaoyong is really annoyed. Damn it, tomorrow is the apocalypse. He speeds up and slams into the other driver's car with more force, enough to knock him out of his lane. The other driver, furious, gets out of the car, starts to call the police and the insurance, but Jiang Xiaoyong jumps in, leaving the man screaming alone. At night, they finally arrive at Jiang Xiaoyong's fortified base. The old man gets out of the car impressed. This is all very impressive. Shan Shan, still in shock, comments, Yeah, 
This is really a bit much. Jiang Xiaoyong instructed, You two go to sleep soon. Things are going to get harder every day. The next morning, Jiang Xiaoyong is drinking coffee, looking out of the window. Shan Shan approaches him, stretching. It's been so long since I've slept so well. Not having to go to class in the morning is so great. Jiang Xiaoyong replies, Since you're awake, let's check out the fortress with me. He starts walking with the old man and Shan Shan, explaining how the fortress was built. The walls are reinforced and the gate also opens remotely. Remember, without my permission, no one except the three of us is allowed to enter. Understood. Shan Shan asks, Oh, what if there are survivors who get here? Are we just going to leave them outside? Jiang Xiaoyong, without losing his composure, replied, In the apocalypse, people's hearts are unpredictable. The dark side of human nature will be magnified infinitely. Being overly compassionate will only lead to trouble. As he spoke, the old man and Shan Shan were startled to see several containers full of resources. Jiang Xiaoyong continues, If the survivors come for help while I'm away, this container zone can offer shelter, but under no circumstances let them enter the fortress. Jiang Xiaoyong concludes, Now I'll show you the food stock and explain which areas of food can be distributed sparingly. Jiang Xiaoyong and the other two enter the place full of food boxes. As they enter, Jiang Xiaoyong glances at the two of them and discreetly uses his mind's eye on them to check if he can trust them. Smiling emojis appear above their heads, indicating extreme trust. That sounds like extreme confidence, thinks Jiang Xiaoyong relieved. He then addresses them, I'll explain it to you. Weapons are very important in the apocalypse. He begins to take the weapons out of the space ring, organizing them carefully. Make sure you keep them under your control. Never let them fall into the wrong hands. The old man, holding a rifle, agrees. Oh yes, of course. You got it. Suddenly, the system pops up with a new mission. Find Meng Shan Shan. Ancient Companions series mission activated. New mission. Ancient Companions I. Task requirement. Find and rescue his former partner, Jiang Shi. Mission reward. 20 points. Good, thought Jiang Xiaoyong. I was beginning to worry about my old comrades. He turns to the two of them and reinforces. Remember everything I've said. Don't break any of these rules. Shan Shan, still worried, asks, Where are you going now? Jiang Xiaoyong, already quickly getting into the car, replies, I'm going to recruit more people to strengthen our team. In the next scene, later that same day, Jiang Xiaoyong is approaching a business that, at first glance, looks like a nightclub. But as he enters, he realizes that it's a bar, where his old friend Jiang Xi is together with other people, singing happily. Jiang Xiaoyong observes the situation from afar. Jiang Xi's friends leave to go to the bathroom, but as they walk down the corridor, half drunk, they bump into a woman. Oh, sorry about that, ma'am, says one of them, trying to apologize. But the man who was with the woman became furious, kicking Jiang Xi against the wall. You little pest, watch where you're going. Jiang Xi's chubby friend approaches him to see how he's doing and asks, Why is that guy beating him up for free like that? This only makes the man angrier. He grabs the fat man by the collar and lifts him into the air. Jiang Xi, trying to calm the situation, says, It was our fault, sorry about that. You don't have to settle it like that. One of the bar staff, who was leaving the restroom, saw the commotion and tried to intervene to calm the fight. But the man starts hitting the employee too. The employee, realizing that the situation is out of control, uses the opportunity to distract the man and allow Jiang Shi and his friend to escape. They run back to the room where they were singing, and the rest of the group asks, What's going on? What's your hurry? They quickly explain that a drunk was trying to pick a fight and beat them up. One of Jiang Shi's friends, braver, suggests, Let's sort this out. But Jiang Shi tries to contain the situation. No, no, enough, man. We're going to graduate in less than a year. There's no need to get into trouble. Let's just keep enjoying ourselves here, okay? However, after a while, the door is abruptly kicked in and the same insufferable man enters, along with the beaten up waiter and a few other people. Jiang Shi's friends are startled, but the troublemaker gets straight to the point, it was those assholes, and he starts beating Jiang Shi and his friends. Meanwhile, the bar worker, who was already in a bad way, tries to intervene again, but ends up being beaten up even more. Jiang Shi, desperate, tries to calm the situation down, but everything seems to be getting out of hand. Just then, the scene cuts to Jiang Xiaoyong arriving at KTV, reflecting, 
As expected of a university student, the world is ending, and you still have a head for singing. And so ends the episode, leaving readers eager for what comes next. That's it, everyone, that was today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you liked it and want to see more content like this, don't forget to leave that naughty like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the little bell so you don't miss anything new. Oh, and before you leave, I'd like to invite you all to become members of the channel. As a member, you get early access to the videos, and you help the channel continue to grow and bring you more and more quality content. So, if you can, click on the Become a Member button and join our community. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. See you!